Hi guys, I'm Melissa. Welcome back to cloudmom.com. This is month 17 with your baby, also month 17 with my baby Bracey, although I'm still doing his corrected age because he's not yet two years old, which is 14 and a half months. The average 17 month old baby boy weighs 23 pounds, seven ounces, which is 10.8 kilos. And the average baby girl weighs 22 pounds, one ounce, which is 10 kilos. At his 17 month checkup, Bracey weighed approximately 10.5 kilos, which is 23.1 pounds. He was half a pound under the average weight and he had gained 700 grams from the last month. His position on the charts for weight, head circumference, and for height went up. How much should my 17 month old toddler be talking? Some children this age are up to quite a few words and some have even started to employ verbs and short phrases. Bracey and none of my older children were doing this at this point. They merely had just a couple of words. Rather than focus on the number of words, my doctors told me to focus on development in Bracey's speech, changes in what he uses with physical gestures, eye contact, and words in terms of his communication skills. Over the past month, I've seen Bracey employing his three words, mama, bebe, and bye-bye even more often. He was saying these words before, but now I see him uttering them with more frequency. Breezy's also having a lot of fun imitating bah. animal sounds, and he bah. says, Woo! when I show bah. him a pig or a horse. So he doesn't have the animal right, but he's getting the idea. He's He's also started to become really vocal about his wishes. You know, when I sit him down in the high chair and he's ready to eat, and he sees a food option in front of him, he's like, ah! you know, kind of like a whiny, demanding tone. And he's much more vocal and assertive than he was in prior months. This kind of communication is good. And what my doctors told me to do is to keep answering back to Bracey using real words. If your baby doesn't appear to be communicating at all, they are not making eye contact. If they are not using physical gestures, and if they are not uttering any types of sounds that sound like words, check with your doctor. How can I encourage my 17 month old to talk? Well, keep a constant flow of words moving towards your baby. Narrate everything you do, narrate everything your baby does. Keep describing things, colors, shapes, numbers, activities, cause and effect. Just keep trying to explain the world around your baby and make it as language rich as you can. You can take daily activities and just narrate them. You know, now I'm making the bed and I'm pulling up the sheet and the sheet is white and then I'm folding the sheet and now I'm going to do the dishes and I'm going to wash the dishes. And you sort of describe things like that to your baby to try to introduce more vocabulary. How should my 17 month old be moving? Most babies are walking at this point. Some have taken this to the next level and are running or starting to walk very, very quickly. Many are able to climb upstairs to get downstairs and start to climb up a slide at the playground, get down a slide at the playground. Whatever your baby is doing, just keep encouraging them to continue to move as much as possible to build their strength. If they want to roam around the house on their little bicycle or their walker, their little scooter animal, try to let them do that as well. Tantrums. I have really seen my share of tantrums. This is my sixth baby. The one thing I've come to realize in the way I look at tantrums is like bonfires. I see them as like little things that you can't really control and over time, they're just gonna burn out. So it's really kind of a test more for you than for your baby. Can you stay cool? And it's not always easy. Sometimes you get really tired. Sometimes you're really frustrated, exacerbated. Sometimes you really can't take anymore. So what are some strategies? Some people recommend sitting down and drinking a tall glass of water. If you get really, really frustrated, try to exit the situation. If you are really in a state, I recommend getting outside to take a walk if possible or taking a very hot shower. By the time you get out of that shower, you'll be a new person and your sanity and your calm will have come back to you. What you're trying to do is model your behavior even now. So try not to get angry, try not to yell, try not to get upset because your baby will see that as the way adults behave and you wanna to try to prevent that as much as you can. A quick word about separation anxiety. This is something I've been talking about in this series since the beginning. What can happen around this age is that your child 
really develops a preference for you or for your husband or your partner or a caregiver or a grandparent. And when it's time to be passed into the arms of someone else or that person has to leave, they get really upset. Well, a couple tips. First of all, experts say you should never try to trick your baby. You should never pretend that you're not leaving and then your baby discovers that you have gone because this can create feelings of mistrust. You actually want to state clearly, mommy has to go, mommy's going to work or mommy's going to the store and I will be back soon. Bye bye, Bracey. And then when you come back, hello, Bracey. And you really sort of are very clear about what is happening. There's no like hiding or even some people don't recommend putting your baby down for a nap and like scooting out of the house. Of course, sometimes you have to leave the house while your baby's napping, but the idea is to be really clear about it. What I've always done with this, and maybe this sounds a bit harsh, but I've always tried not to give my baby too much power. So if I was playing with my baby, I'm holding the baby and someone else, you know, comes around, I would sort of hand them off to that person. And I always wanted my kids to be comfortable with a wide range of people. And if they protested, I never made too much of a big deal out of it. And hopefully the person took the, my kid and went off and did something fun and sort of distracted them. That's what I've tried to do rather than make a big deal out of it. And certainly I've never given in to the fact that maybe during certain moments or weeks or months, my child preferred to be with me. I've always tried to encourage them to spend as much time as possible with a wide variety of people, you know, inviting people over the house, cousins, friends, whoever, and trying to make that part of my baby's day because I think it's just a richer and more emotionally healthy experience for a child than to be so, so attached just to his mom or just to his dad. And I know that it's gonna make transitions easier too for Bracey later on if he's brought up this way when he has to go to school and so forth. Intellectual activities for a 17 month old baby. Read, read, and read some more. Dance, talk as much as you can. If you're really busy, turn on something like the radio. Avoid the TV, narrate your world, explain everything you can, cause and effect. Family members, age, birthday parties. Why are we doing this? Why are we shopping? We're out shopping because we're gonna buy food and we're gonna have dinner and that's gonna be yummy and that's gonna keep us healthy and strong. Why, why, why? Explain all those things to your baby as you go through your day. That leads me to fine motor skills. What are good fine motor activities for a baby this age? Blocks, stacking blocks, seeing if they can get to increasing numbers of blocks. Big wooden puzzles, having to put them into their place. I recently bought a toy that's terrific where my baby has to string like a thread through little pieces of blocks and that's a very good fine motor skill. Trains are great so that your baby can put the tracks together and then run the trains along the tracks and all my boys have loved playing with trains. Drawing with large crayons is a good idea, even just to hold the crayon like this in the palm of their hand and get in the habit of moving and writing is really, really great for your baby as is finger painting, although it's very messy, but just to start to use the fingers as much as you can. Try to do that once in a while. Every day might be a bit ambitious, but once in a while. One other thing, it used to really bother me with my older kids when I'd be trying to read them a book and they would flip through the pages and then take the book and like fling it away. And now I realize I'm like, bingo. I feel like they're not reading, but you know what they're doing? They're developing their fine motor skills because the turning of the pages, especially when it comes to like a cardboard book, is great for their hands and the throwing takes a lot of strength and force and determination. So you want to encourage that behavior. Later on, you'll get into, you know, the whole we don't throw books. What should my 17 month old be eating? Continue to introduce foods that are high in vitamin C, which helps the absorption of iron. Whole grains, which are very healthy. You want to have fruits, you want to have vegetables, you want to have healthy dairy products, no processed food, limit the salt and limit the sugar and try to just introduce increasing varieties of foods and get them all out there in front of your baby. By this point, you should be mostly with finger foods, although you might have some things that are a bit soupier, like soups mixed with rice or spaghetti bolognese, where you prefer to like spoon it into your baby's mouth. But by this point, a lot of your baby's foods, your baby should be eating with their fingers on their own, and they might be getting a little more skilled at using the spoon as well. Just like we adults, toddlers need a certain amount of each of the core food groups every day. It's just the quantity that's much lower. Some experts say toddlers will only eat 25% of what an adult would eat. I noticed Bracey eating even a little bit more than this. So let's walk through this. 
grains. It said that your baby needs three servings. That could be one slice of whole wheat toast, half a cup of rice, half a cup of pasta. All those things count in terms of healthy grains. Try to go for whole grains and brown rice over white bread and white rice and white pasta. It's healthier for your baby. Fruits, the rule is actually one fruit a day. I try to give a lot more. That could be a medium-sized banana, a small apple, a pear, something like that. Opt for fresh fruit, not canned fruit, and try to encourage your baby to sample and try as many fruits as possible because fruit is very healthy in terms of vitamin C and it has a lot of fiber, which is great for your baby. Vegetables, some guidelines say one serving a day. Again, I try to do more. I try to have vegetables at lunch and at dinner soft cooked broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower, try anything you can, steam it or boil it very, very soft. You can now serve it in a much bigger chunk and let your baby go to town eating those vegetables. Really try to have that be part of their daily regime. The other thing you wanna do is concentrate on your baby's intake of calcium via dairy products or the equivalent through yogurt, through cheese, through whole milk or the equivalent. If you're breastfeeding, you need to supplement with dairy products. Your doctor will walk through that with you and with water. And if you're not breastfeeding, the rules say you wanna give two to three eight ounce glasses of milk per day. So you really want your baby to continue to get a lot of calcium. One other word on diet, it's very healthy for your baby to have a certain amount of really good fat. So try mixing in a spoonful or two of coconut oil or even olive oil or butter into something your baby's eating every day because they need that fat for their growing little brain. With that said, what does my schedule look like with a baby this age? Now, many babies at this point have gone to one nap. Others, however, have not yet made that transition. So I'm going to stick to the two nap schedule with three meals and two snacks. Although this schedule only has one snack, because the breakfast and the lunch are quite close together. So here goes. And again, you can start this at any point of the day that you like. You don't have to start it at seven o'clock. You could start it at eight o'clock. You could even start it at nine o'clock. It's just a guideline of, of how to organize your baby's day. And one other thing, if you're still breastfeeding, I recommend doing the breastfeeding first. That's much easier. Your baby's gonna have much more of an appetite and a desire to do it than later on when they have a full stomach. If, however, you are doing milk feedings, I think by all means, go ahead and give those after the meal, unless you have a problem getting your baby to drink the milk once they've had other food, in which case you wanna keep it before the meal because it's still a very, very important cornerstone of your baby's nutrition. So with all that said, here's the schedule. 7 a.m., breast milk or milk, then breakfast, sleep from 9.30 to 11. 11 a.m., breast milk or milk, then a solids lunch, sleep from 1.30 to 3. 3 p.m., breast milk or milk, then a snack. 5.30, dinner, you can try giving the food first. 6.30 could be your final milk feeding, and 7 p.m. is night, night. Here is the Bracey update. Bracey had an amazing visit to the U.S. He really enjoyed spending time with his godmother and Aunt Kiki, with his uncle, with his grandparents. He really enjoyed seeing mommy in a brand new beautiful knit sweater that her mother made for her. That was really, really fun. He really enjoyed taking the books off the shelf at the local bookstore. When he got back to Spain celebrating two 22-22 was a really fun milestone event. A visit from grandpa in Spain and a very, very long cuddle topped off an amazing month. I will see you guys back next month for month 18.